One thing I want to do before I get too far, uh, I've just delivered a screw right into there and what this does is it goes past this point here and it ties this to here and prevents this from splitting or being pulled too far apart. To do that, I'm going to take a small drill and a one inch screw, or is it one inch? It is, it's one and one eighth this screw, so what that is is uh, 30 mil, something like 30 millimeters will work fine. Somewhere between this rise here and the corner of the mortise, just drill a hole right in the center, or just actually more towards the, the hollow scallop side, just a little bit, one sixteenth nearer to that, and just drill a little way down, not very far, and you can also angle in towards the main body this way, just a little bit, doesn't really matter. I'm going to countersink as well, that helps to seat the head of the screw without using the screw then as a wedge to split the wood, so this just gives me a small conical recess and we can drive that screw without too much torque just to cinch everything down. This is where you have to be careful, you don't want the screw head, you just want it flush or a little bit below but you don't want the screw head to split this, it probably won't if you've chosen the right wood. But that's mine dealt with, now I don't have to worry about it. Now we've got to cut this part here, this is the recess that takes this lever cam in here, this slides in here and then we have a pin that fits through here, one of the um, coil pins that goes in here. So this is what happens here, so we've got to cut this recess. And the recess, I don't know if you can see right in the bottom, it, it actually bottoms out here, one and one sixteenth from the end of here. So we have an incline, a straight incline in here, and we just do that just in very similar fashion to one we might use for a mortise. Let me see what we've got here. So I want three eighths, and I've set a, a mortise gauge somewhere. I think this is the one here. So I want this to leave three eighths in between these two pinpoints here. And there we have it. So I've got my three eighths there in between. So again, I'm using a single pin, which is quite unusual for a mortise, but this works so well. I'm staying with it. Onto the end here, like that, and onto the end here. Now I've come along from this end two and three quarters from the end of my clamp here. Of course, if you're making long reach clamps, these measurements will be slight. This will be the same, but the, this overall length may be variable. That's going to be up to you. Well, what we're going to do first is just start a saw curve along this top edge here, the, the flat face. So I'm going here on the inside of my line following the gauge line till I meet that two and three quarter point on the waist side, on the waist side which is that mid section I'm going to take out, stand up on end here and then follow this line too You can open that mouth up a little bit just to gain a little bit of extra. We can't get much of this but we can get some of it with the saw. The rest we're going to do with the chisel. out this midsection here now. It 
if there is a slight misalignment, you can always go in and, and trim with the chisel, as long as you've got on the waist side. This is where we go with a 3 8 chisel if we've got one. And I just happen to have one there. So since it's nice and tight in the vise, main body of wood here, just take off this uh, top section just to get it out of the way. You can go all the way down, but try not to cut into this um, thin section here. So what I did with mine, I just used a, sla a scrap of wood in between here, like this, just a slither to cushion the two at the underside of this. Cinch it nice and tight again. And I'm going down here. Now, this incline is one and one, it culminates one and one sixteenth from the end of here in the bottom of here. So I'm going to uh, work down here. And I kind of have to work this a bit like a mortise now and um, work towards the end or work from that outer end there like this. See it right inside. So that piece of pine that I've got as a cushion in there is stopping me from entering the sub the other half of the uh, the clamp face. And I want to go one and one sixteenth or thereabouts. It wouldn't matter if you went one and a quarter. It's not going to make hardly any difference. So I'm almost there. So I'm coming back up here to the two and three quarter point here. And now I'm going to go right between those cheeks. Try to follow the wall without splitting anything underneath or going into those side cheeks of the wall. Once you've got down into there, nobody's ever, ever going to see inside there, I don't think, again. I'm making sure that the mortise hole is, is wide enough for my chisel down at the bottom. I don't want to split those outer walls. and well, it, it wouldn't be good, would it? Cleaning up the corners. <laughs> Just get rid of the waste. I'm just barely there, see that? And that gets me right into the pine and a very nice clean wall, which might need a little bit more pairing depending on the wood. I want to make sure that I am at least that one and a sixteenth there, and I am. I'm, I'm actually one and three thirty seconds, so that's near enough. And this is similar to the piece that's going to be going in here. Now I could be compressing those walls, so I'm going to pair down in there now. I can still see my gauge line on this side and a little bit on that side. So I'm just going to trim that wall with a wider, bigger chisel here just to get it smooth. Try it again. Close. Same on this side. I think that's close enough because anything else that I might want to 
work on here would be perhaps I would use paint plane some off this but that looks pretty good no it doesn't I'm gonna go in again just feel like I'm just so close but not quite there and I'll feel better if this fits nicely before I go away there's my knife Here's my piece, that's going to work. So I can do a little bit of fettling on this. So now I'm going to make the clamp, the cam. I need to get this out. To drill a hole in here, I've got to fit my lever cam in here so this one is fitting quite nicely so this pops up here I have a, a template here it's quite simple uh, the um, the hole here this is the where I'm going to drive the pin through when I attach it to the clamp head this hole is uh, 11 16 in from the end of your piece of wood and of course this piece of wood will be given in a drawing and then up from this face here, I've come three eighths of an inch. That gives me the position of the hole that's going to go in here. You don't need that really because we're going to drill through the two when it's together. But I've got this piece flushed on this top edge. So the cam details will be given to you somewhere else. But this is how it fits on here. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. Better to make a template draw around the town especially if you're making several of these which i'm sure you will there's my shape and of course now if i'm careful cutting this i can leave a gap between this one and i get two uh, angles cut at one time So that's, that's how I'm mapping mine out. You can do yours uh, however you want to. That works best, I think. I'm going to rip down, leaving my line in. Like that. That's my overall length. I may as well go ahead and cut that now so it strengthens this. And I may as well plane this edge down to my line now. I'm going to take the line out, just about out. I can just see it there, and that's because the line would have been on the outside of my piece. On this end piece here, I'm just going straight with a file. I don't need to go with a rasp on this. And this could be done after you've done the other end and drilled your holes and everything, but I'm doing this now. There's my shape. So I've got quite a bit to take off. This is where I would generally switch to the rasp or the chisel just to take off the bulk. 45. I'm going to go right down to my line till I hit the line almost 
I'm just a little bit off there yet. And then I want that continuous sweep for a smooth operation. And this goes into the, into the shoe. I'm close there, so I can go with my file. I'm not really looking for this to be super smooth because I want a little friction on the end of here. It's going to smooth itself out just through using the clamp anyway. But just get that continuous arc. Then it won't be jerky when you come to. Here's another way of getting that, the bulk of the waist down. Pop it with the heel of your hand. Much faster. So you've got two methods. And that's that. No, I'm, st I'm still a little bit off on this one here. And I do want it to be a nice arc when I use it. That's good. A little out of square now. So make it square so you have the full seating edge. Or the full edge seating, should I say. This now goes in here. And you can see when we start spinning this on its axis, it's going to open that end. So the next thing is to drill the hole in here. Now I want, I'm going to put my marks on here. This is the line, that's actually the bottom of the recess, but I'm actually going to move this over. So I'm just going to get this to an approximate position on here. That will give me that would give me an idea of where this is going to go. So here's my template. So I'm flush on the end here, and I'm flush here inside the saw curve here because this cam here, this part of the cam, is obviously twice as big as this. So when I rotate this, this will spin around. So I need to be conscious of that. And I am ready to pop this on. That's the position of the hole. There's the center. I'm going to put this inside here now. I'm going to squeeze this together so it bottoms out in here and then push this from the end here. So I know that this now is bottomed out. I want to make sure it's in the bottom of the recess up here. So make sure everything goes in. We can always fettle this after we've done this. So down in the bottom, there's no gap between the end and this is flush on the end. It can even be passed here if you want it to be. Now we're ready to drill the holes through there. So I need a backer on this, like this. And I'm going to eyeball this through the hole. I've got my four mil drill here. So I go right, I'm going to start this with a, I already did and all. And now I'm sighting this, I'm sighting square across and then I have to be conscious of my vertical alignment, this or horizontal alignment technically. But I need to be perpendicular. There I'm through the first one, there was no slippage. Clean out the drill bit. And that's ready. Now this is perfectly aligned. Rather than take this out, uh, I'm going to put my roll pin into there. 
I might not set it all the way through, but you can always back these out with a nail punch. This will go in here now. Get it on somewhere solid. Now I'm, I'm in, I'm well through. Here's my cinching. So you can see we're good, we're aligned, everything is working just as we want it. Give it a little space here, just to, so I'm just barely through. I'm a little bit more than I want to file off, so, and you don't, you don't even have to file it off. So this one now is ready to work. So I cut this off with a hacksaw. Uh, I got this one, probably, I've got a couple there. Junior would work well too. I've actually filed off the face, so I'm not touching the face with the with the um, kerf of the teeth. Drop it in the vise. Flat file. I'm keeping this. You'll see why in a minute. File that flush, a little bit of sandpaper. Looks great. That's it, that's my lever cam in operation now. It'll work great. Uh, so this now slides onto the stem. I've got this one cut. I still have to drill holes in this one to put the roll pins into that one. This one slides in here and uh, lines up there. So we clamp here, we've got that part done. A Couple more steps to do now. One is I want to drill through here I'm going to eyeball the center of the stem, that's this part here. So there's the center. And I'm going to do like I did on this one here and just offset. Can you see how these are not perfectly aligned? They just offset. And I'm going to go, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. How many inches did I come? I don't know how many inches I came. But if you come down here, three-eighths of an inch and come up here, three-eighths of an inch, that will be perfect. And then go on the outside of the line here and go on the outside of the line here and just drill through that all together. One thing I want to do is make sure this is either protruding past or dead flush. I'm going past so I can file it down. And I want to make sure that my clamp head is square. That's just a matter of personal preference. You could actually even go the other way even though this is square now, I can press this and consolidate the fibers and make this even slightly out of square to give it a little toe in there. So I've got uh, maybe 360, no, not, not 330 seconds of a toe in there. It's about three millimeters. Set this in the vise and drill through everything while you've got it together so this side here now we're gonna have to do something about this because what would happen if I carried all the way through here I'd burst all the way through and the other side would look so rugged and you were all out there thinking, what is he doing? So here we go. Just wanted you to see how I was aligning everything. So now through the steel.
sure nothing moved. Perfect. I love the way these roll pins work. They're so nice. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just align one, just get it through the steel, and then I'm going to the next one, go through that steel, like that. So they're both in the steel. There I am down. That's good. So I cut those off. That's the head done. That gets the uh, the pin down, and, um, and I can file that off. But there's one more little step that I did with mine, and that was um, I just added a little bit of uh, super glue. Not in the roll pins, but because they're sprung. They're constantly under pressure. They're always going to be springing to the narrowest part. But what I did is I, I ran some super glue in from the top of the bar into here and let that set up. You could use an accelerator if you want to. I might just do one for you. Just to show you what I did. So they look nice and neat, uh, crisp, clean. And then some super glue into here and along this edge here. Now you don't need to use the accelerator. You can just run the super glue in and leave it to set up. Run the super glue in and once you've done that, let it dry five minutes. Go in with your file and file this nice and flush. So there's no metal parts to catch your work, like that. And that's that. So now we just need to put the leather on here. That's the last stage. Um, I'd just like to point out, this bar, when it went into here, was nice and snug. I did make it nice and snug on purpose. I didn't really want any movement. The glue was just to add a little bit extra. The pins obviously cinch everything down. But this one needs to be loose. This one, it needs to move up and down the main bar like that. We need that. We have to have that. We've got to drill a hole in the end of here now. Let me see how best to do that for you to see. So you probably we'll want to use a center punch. On here, just to start the drill in the right place. I'm going up from the end quarter of an inch, centered in the bar, like that. So there's my start point for my drill. And a three eighths bit, I mean a four millimeter bit. Oops, where are you going, Paul? Thought that would help me to get started. There we go. I think my bit needs sharpening. And this 
goes on here. That one's going a bit loose. That one's a bit loose. Sometimes the roll pins have a, an easy start because they're beveled on the outside edge. So that's that. Take off the sharp edges. And that's the stop for the, the clamp. You can always pop those out if ever you need to, to take the head and use it on a longer clamp or make an additional bar, whatever you want. You can put two of these onto one bar. If you had a long bar, you can take two of these, take one off the other, put them both onto one bar and you've got a long clamp. So you can be versatile like that. Now we just need to do the leather. I'm going to put leather onto these two faces because it really helps. Some people use uh, cork and that works well too. So I've already got that marked. So I need two of these. Tabs, really. You can cut these after. You can put these on and then cut them too. It's probably easier than my doing it this way. Because I like, when I'm using leather like this, I, I like to uh, put, um, stretch the leather, really. So this is dub just double-sided tape. It works fine. It does last. It's not e got to do it right though, watch this. So that's one. Not very nice. Pop this off. I'm going through the face here because I can get to the facing. And then th I want the suede side out. So the suede goes right on here, just like that. And that's one done. And my next piece, a bit ragged. And we're just about done with this. Last little bit. This clamp can't wait to be used. Look at the way it's closing up on me. That's great. This one on here. And that's that. This is my cam clamp works perfectly clamp up whatever you want with this if they do jam like that which they sometimes do it's only a temporary thing and you just tap the end like i just did there it is that's the finished clamp i can't really do anything except apply some finish which will stop the glue and stains from building up on the clamp we've got the clamps made and now we're going to glue up a box see how they work so this is one of the great advantages of this type of clamp is they don't put any torque on the work itself. So when you actually apply pressure, it's very direct, no twisting action. It's very nice. Drop this bottom on here. It's got a slight cup in it, but we can work with that. I'm going to just clamp this in the vise first and then bring my clamps in to apply the final pressure. And this is one of the nice things I like here. When you squeeze this, apply the pressure, it's there. It's very direct, very positive. And you can move these around so easily once you have them in place. So you can see here, you've got a gap here. And actually it's bowed, can you see that? 
So when I put these clamps on, is really this is the fastest of all the clamps to apply. And easily adjusted after you've applied them. See, nice, no gaps here, no gaps along here. So that's it, really. Oops, I got my clamps the wrong way, though. So again, like I said, you can easily adjust them, even when you've made a mistake like I just did. Apply these the same way. And that's it. That's my box glued up. These clamps are so versatile, nobody should be without them. I really love them and I think you'll enjoy them too. Make your own and you're on your way. Mm -hmm.